years ago, I met two other pilots. We boarded a commuter airplane. Uh, we were carrying bank checks throughout the state of California. After takeoff, we were climbing through uh, about 100 feet when all of a sudden we stopped climbing. And I didn't understand it at the time, but our engines started screaming out of sync and we struggled to stay airborne. Our left wing clipped a row of very tall uh, trees about 100 feet high and uh, we splintered those trees like kindling with our left wing and that turned the aircraft toward this well we didn't know it existed until that time but a seven-story building capped with a mosaic dome and it was all made of concrete and marble and we slammed into the building uh, just five feet from the top it was erected ironically in memory of uh, famous aviators. It's called Portal of the Folded Wings. It sits in the middle of a cemetery. It became known as the most ironic uh, airplane crash in America. And the, the impact caused the airplane to splinter in maybe a couple thousand pieces altogether. There was no cockpit to be in anymore. And so the three pilots that were in the cockpit that day, we slammed into this immovable object and then uh, no cockpit to be in. We fell then 70 feet to the ground with a bone crushing impact. But uh, everything changed right then. The next moments transformed my entire life. And that's what you guys are just referring to. But everything I had ever learned about life and death and God was transformed. I was hovering about 15 feet above a crash site. I didn't feel any pain. I really wasn't worried or upset, but I was very curious and confused because I didn't know at, mom at that moment that I had been in a crash. I didn't understand what was uh, I was looking at. But below me were three bodies. They lie motionless at the uh, base of a building. The first body then I recognized was Gene, the pilot in the left seat and he had been decapitated. I waited years to explain that, but that's the facts. The second body was Chuck, my flight instructor, friend, my mentor. Uh, the third body uh, was crashed up, smashed up against the uh, cockpit instrument panel. And shockingly, as I looked down, I recognized clearly that that was me. That was my body down there. But I wondered, how can that be me? Uh, because I'm up here, so how can that me be me down there? And I don't know how this happened then, but I suddenly realized, okay, I am not my body. I am a spirit, and my spirit lives on. Did I learn that as a child? Perhaps. But I begin to realize that all of a sudden in this new dimension or state that I was in, I was learning things. I can say this now, but I was learning things from God right into my heart. No words, not even engaging the mind, heart to heart. My spirit was being um, injected with knowledge, with wisdom, with, with information. I watched as they put my body into an ambulance and they rushed it toward the St. Joseph's Hospital nearby. And at the hospital, I was quickly transferred to the emergency room. Within moments, I was again free of my body and I was hovering just below the acoustical ceiling, looking down, watching the flurry of activity. My pilot uniform was uh, torn to shreds, soaked in blood and fuel. I could see aircraft debris sticking out of my head, my abdomen, my legs. Uh, my face was uh, highly disfigured. Now, uh, don't don't criticize me now. It's still disfigured. I understand that, but I had a lot of uh, problem with my. I've had a lot of uh, plastic surgeries. My chin was almost severed from my face. I had a big cut down. Uh, thank God for the plastic surgeons way back then. But there was a gash that went across my forehead, my eyebrow, into my eye, cut my eye 
in right down in the middle, not in two pieces. It was still connected at the very back, but my right eye was uh, basically hopeless to ever see out of it again. And it was apparent also that almost every bone in my body would be broken. Yet, here I am again looking down, feeling no pain. I hovered above that body, still in the ER, and the strangest of all things happened. A memory flashed through my mind, kind of like an old movie, you know, uh, a powerful memory flashback. I was in the fifth grade. I had been kneeling at the altar. Uh, there was a cross there. Some young man who I looked up to uh, was explaining to me how to pray to receive Jesus. I had come forward in a summer camp. I was in the fifth grade. And uh, I realized even then that Jesus was the son of God. He died in my place and my sins were forgiven because of what he had done. All I needed to do was trust and believe and invite him into my heart. Well, I did that. And here I am in the emergency room re revisiting this experience that I had forgotten all about. And on the heels of that flashback, so to speak, uh, I realized I was no longer that tender-hearted kid who was zealous toward God. I was completely selfish and arrogant. It was all about me, my life, my goals, my dreams, the money I would make, the places I would travel to. Oh, my goodness gracious. Back in the ER now, I'm still above looking down. The memory ended and I felt shame and sadness and grief. And then uh, that sadness left and I had forgotten about that at that moment. And I started moving backwards uh, out of the emergency room. Um, I started moving down the hallway backwards. I was being pulled by something. I couldn't control it, couldn't steer it. I uh, didn't even understand it. And the next thing I know, I'm turning and going forward and I have departed the hospital. And I know this sounds wild to all my uh, professional aviator friends out there, but this really happened to me. I uh, was moving at uh, blinding speed through what looked like deep outer space. And the strange thing was there was a brilliant light beam that was emanating from what appeared to be my chest. And it was guiding me. I was following within this beam of light and I was going through at just incredible speed, small lights passing me going the other direction. And uh, far, far in the distance was what looked like a small sphere of light, like a sun. And it got bigger and bigger and bigger, and it was more bright than the sun, and yet uh, it was warm, and it didn't hurt my eyes to look at it. Uh, it was then I realized that I would, had been escorted by two uh, angelic beings right behind me, on the left and right side of me. Uh, they were bigger than I was. They were uh, masculine and very strong looking, and they seemed to be just... Uh, completely delighted to be escorting me. Um, I remember them for some, some strange reason. I noticed that they were clothed in a white seamless robe woven with silver threads. I've always remembered that. They had a gold band circling there uh, in the middle of their chest. Above was this uh, brilliant, magnificent city and it was gradually taking shape. It was, in the, it was in this light, and the light was white at the core, pure, thick. Uh, it's hard to even describe light this way, but it was like a thick molasses. Uh, sorry to, it doesn't make sense, I know, but the light was so strong, it was palpable. palpable. And uh, it, as it came, forward, it uh, turned into a brilliant gold. And so the city itself took on the complete gold. I, I've called it the city of God. 
I've called it the city of gold. Both would be correct from what I remember. And uh, it's clearly a city of light. And all of this time, as I'm getting closer to the city, gradually, some kind of glorious music uh, was playing in my heart. And on my approach from where I was suspended, I could see over this massive wall of a city. And the city was incredible. It was, uh, the wall was incredible too, brightly colored. Uh, over the wall were pitch, picture perfect homes grouped in little quaint, colorful, harmonic uh, townships. Each had a incredible blend of harmony with the others. Uh, I mean, I, I never learned to talk like this. This is unlike the way I grew up. And yet this experience happened, it changed me. Um, the wall was about as thick as it was tall and it had these translucent stones uh, all put together. Uh, just a multitude of colors were coming forth. The city was still in the distance. Um, and I just have to say, you know, later, miraculously, oh, the word miraculous is a little bit of an understatement, but miraculously, with the healing of God, with the answers of prayer, with learning how faith works, learning how God works, seeking first the kingdom of God, and then his righteousness and all these things would come unto you. With all of that in the proper order, God began to answer prayer, do miracle upon miracle. Um, like you, Sean, I, I did not grow up with miracles or charismatic uh, understanding. Uh, this all changed as God began to show me how real he is and how he is connected with his word. His word, the word of God is the structure that holds everything together, even in the world that we live in. And I, I just to make long story short, I got to see God put me back together piece by piece, part by part. And I've flown all over the world, 50 years as a professional pilot and pilot instructor, mainly. That's what God gave me a gift of teaching other pilots and helping improve aviation safety. I say all that to say this, I've been blessed to fly into most of the world's uh, biggest cities and at night. And some of them are massive, you know, Paris, for example, but nothing was bigger or more massive or more beautiful than the city that I was going to uh, in this heaven experience. My senses were working better and I can't explain, I couldn't explain it then, I can now. Um, there's mountains in the distance. Um, but like I said, from the very beginning, uh, there was this glorious music. Every note more beautiful than I thought was possible. The melodies, the vibrations. Yeah, I, I kind of understood three-part harmony, you know, at that age. Oh, it was just uh, so much harmony. I, I can't even count it. And it was just perfection. The music uh, has stayed with me. I, I sort of brought back, I'm not a musician. I barely play any instruments. I dabble with a guitar, okay? But I'm not a musician. I'm not a trained musician. And people have written to me and said, tell me about the music. I'm a professional philharmonic, you know, orchestra leader. Tell me about the music. And uh, all I can tell you about music is that the music is in your heart. It's, it's in your heart. It's, it's part of who we are made by, by God. And we get in harmony with the music. It's, it's the most glorious, wonderful thing. They say, well, tell us about the music. And they want to know about the technical part of it. But music is a part of the worshiping of God. And it's, it's beyond description. I, I, I probably can't talk more about it now, but uh, oh my gosh, octaves, uh, 50 octaves maybe above middle C and below. It's just crazy. While there, I noticed a group of small, uh, small little band of people that were gathering together, getting ready to welcome me. And uh, they had known that I was coming apparently. They were just now arriving and they were waiting for me. 
And they had brighter eyes than I've ever seen, brighter smiles than, than ever, of course, on earth. And they were clearly overjoyed that I was arriving. And I looked, they acted like family, like we would know each other. And yet I didn't notice anybody like family at first. And then of course, later it hit me, oh my gosh, we are family, we're blood family. We share the blood of Jesus that makes us brothers and sisters even more than biological families back on uh, biological blood relatives back on earth. So the family of God, if you're not a, uh, if you're not a believer, think about this. One of the benefits of joining the family of God is that you have millions of brothers and sisters all over the world just waiting to embrace you. And we have this one accord. We have a lot of work to do, of course, but we have this one accord that comes naturally as we allow God's Holy Spirit inside of us. Anyway, uh, I was changed by this um, incredible family. It, it changed me. I brought this information back. It's, it's strange. Uh, there was every race represented every uh, even nat natural language on the earth was probably represented. There was male and female represented. And I noticed none of that. The love was so unconditional. The love was so overwhelming that I didn't even notice until I got back that there was every race and gender of the, the genders were represented. It mattered not. What mattered is that we were communicating and loving each other spirit to spirit. There aren't enough uh, words in the English language, obviously, to uh, explain heaven or the majesty of heaven, how much love there is, uh, how holy heaven is. There's a word, holy. I didn't, un I didn't understand what in the world that word meant as a kid, as a teenager. And heaven is full of holiness and it's it's wonderful and in heaven we are part of that we're part of the righteousness of god not because we are perfect not because we do everything right no we have right standing with god because we are a child of god through jesus through what jesus did and we trust and believe that then that makes us righteous in God's eyes. It's phenomenal. Here's the greatest gift in the world. It's called the gospel. That Jesus pardoned me. He pardoned you. There's nothing you can do that is outside of the arms of God's loving, precious forgiveness. And it's through Jesus Christ. You know, the Bible talks about heaven and it says, I have not seen an ear has not heard, nor has entered into the heart of man, the things that God has prepared for him. And uh, it's wonderful. Heaven is great. We're all going there. Each and every person listening to my voice and your voice, both of you, we are already in eternity. Yeah, we're, when we die, we just leave from here and we go to now there's the big question, where do we go? Are we going to heaven or are we going not to heaven? Hell is real as well. You have guests that have talked about that. Heaven isn't experienced uh, in the flesh. It's experienced in the heart, really. My body was on the earth. I'm up there in my spirit. The spirit and the heart are the same. And that's why it changed me. I was in a coma for three days. When I woke up, the first thing that happened to me, there was a nurse that came in just doing a routine check, and all of a sudden I was awake. And I tried to talk to her. I tried to speak, my face was all bandaged and stitched up, and I felt like my face was ripping apart when I tried to talk to her finally. And what I wanted to say to her was, do you know Jesus? Do you know if you're going to heaven? God is real, heaven is real. I wanted to say all that and couldn't. She brought the doctor in and I tried to tell the doctor, Dr. Homer Graham was my doctor. Uh, he came into the room, tried to check me and I kept trying to tell him, what did you do? My eyes, you've given me new eyes. What have you done? I have new eyes. And he didn't understand. 
<laughs> I got to know him very, very well later. He too turned his life over to the Lord Jesus. He could not deny the miraculous answers to prayer that his patient who would never walk again and never see out of his eye again and certainly never fly again, but watched all of these things happen. And he became a believer in Jesus. He's waiting for me now, Dr. Homer Graham. Yet uh, I felt like he had surgically removed my old eyes <laughs> and somehow for some reason inserted new eyes because when I woke up from the coma, um, nothing was the same. I felt like I had, oh, was seeing in black and white in two dimensions before the crash. And then after I woke up in the coma, the easiest way to explain it, now I'm seeing in three dimensions and in color. That's in a sense, kind of what happened. I could see so clearly and all that mattered to me at that point and from then on was, do people understand who Jesus really is? And I've come to believe that if they really understand who Jesus is, anybody in their right man, mind will want to receive him. You have nothing to lose, everything to gain. Heaven is incredible, it's beyond words, and yet once I returned, the most important thing was what we just discussed here. What will you do with the life God has given you? And what will you do with that name, Jesus? Is he just a prophet? Is he just a good man? Or is he the son of God? And is he the way to get to heaven? Which is what I, of course, I'm convinced of, obviously. And I tried to do my best. When I was in the uh, crash, I had multiple surgeries. No sense going into all of that. But six months or so after the crash, I came to do another surgery. I had about 12 I'd already done. I got into my room and there's this roommate, a 77 year old, loud, crabby old man. He rattled off a, lot, a bunch of complaints and I wondered, wow, maybe I can change rooms. And then it hit me. This is the same hospital that I had come back from heaven about. This is the same place I took my flight to heaven where I'd visited heaven and came back. And I began to think about this angry man next to me, his fragile life. And, um, I'm 19 years old, okay, and this, I began to think about him, and I uh, had this overwhelming love for him, and it filled me, and I walked over on one leg, and I had one arm working and one eye working, and I rattled the little curtain between us, and I said, excuse me, sir, um, my name's Dale Black, what's your name? And he said, the name's Green, Joel Green, and I said, well, I'm Dale, and I nice to meet you. And he yanked back the curtain and he had this leathery face glaring up at me. And he said, what are you in the hospital for? You're just a kid. Well, I gave him the short version of the crash and he had heard about it on the news. So he, uh, you know, he'd known who I was in a sense. I had my 15 minutes of fame. And I said, Mr. Green, do you know Jesus Christ? He's the reason I'm alive, sir. He's given me joy. I have purpose now, Mr. Green, are you going to go to heaven when you die? And I said, I don't want you to die now, <laughs> but are you gonna to go to heaven? And he looked surprised, turned away, said nothing. And here I am, this punk kid, this beat up kid, what's motivating me? Who's doing this? I'd seen heaven, I saw eternity, it changed me. I continued, Mr. Green, do you know about the free gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ? Silence. His face softened though. Tears began to flow, lots of tears. I just waited. And then finally he said, Dale, I'm a minister's son, 77 years old. I've been running from God all of my life. It's too late for me now. I said, too late? <laughs> Mr. Green, it's never too late for God. He can turn something into beautiful into your life. The time is now. Mr. Green, and I'm just flowing with words I'd never learned. I've never prepared for. Mr. Green, get forgiveness from your past now. You can do that with a prayer. And again, he was silent. And I thought, 
he's unresponsive. He's not going to do anything. And God kept pushing me with his gentle spirit, which I've learned that still small voice to listen to and obey. You see, a lot was at stake for him. Everything was at stake. I said, Mr. Green, how would you like to pray a simple prayer? And uh, he put his hand in mine and I led him into a simple, simple prayer. And he received Jesus in a wonderful way. Afterwards, he was friendly. He was nice to the nurses. The next morning after surgery, I was wheeled back to my room. I glanced over to his bed. Where's Mr. Green? And the nurse said, Dale, I'm sorry, but Mr. Green died this morning. It, it hit me. Uh, he's in heaven. He's in heaven. And I told God then and there that I would never be timid or shy about the gospel. And since that time, I've been privileged and honored to help a lot of people, just like Joel Green, one-on-one. -on -one. And I asked God, does the Lord help me? A thousand Joel Greens every year, a thousand a year. And it turned out to be about 30 years later, about 30,000 people have received Jesus in that same way, not as a pastor, not as a missionary, uh, as pilot. Uh, during my work days and not as a pilot on my days off, paying my own way to everything. You know, we have weekly videos, uh, what we call uh, messages from heaven. Uh, we bring God's perspective on current events and uh, people can go to our website and we just love helping people understand the precious power of God's Holy Spirit. And uh, part of it is salvation, but another part of it is knowing the word of God and not only knowing it, but even more importantly is learning how to apply it. Knowing is good, but doing is essential. <laughs> and so we're trying to help people understand how to do the uh, Word of God and live victoriously and powerfully. DaleBlack.org, we have all these videos and all these free downloads that are available. And, uh, you know, you guys, you, you, you understand what I'm getting ready to say, but telling my story about visiting heaven, telling this whole thing, has made my professional life uh, much more difficult, very problematic, but time is short. And I was the only survivor of that airplane crash and God gave me a second chance. And now every breath that I take is because of him and every breath that I take, I choose to place under his control. And, uh, you know, I, be I believe that God has given me recently, a few years back, that he spoke to me uh, during the time of prayer and fasting, that the return of Jesus as Messiah is imminent. He's coming back again, but this time he's not coming back as Lord and Savior. He's coming back as, ju as judge. And we're now trying in our ministry, we're now changing things to help other people understand the last days and helping them find their way to heaven and helping them get prepared for what's coming around the corner. You know, the Bible says that the, the night is coming when no one can work. And then I say, you know, we need to work now while there is still light. So that's my story. Uh, God is real. The Bible, his word is Again, the structure that holds everything together. And I firmly, truly believe that we as believers can bring heaven to earth. Now, that's how Jesus taught us to pray, that thy will be done as it is in heaven, you know, here on this earth. And we're seeing that with lots of miracles, lots of supernatural events, but also blending the natural with the supernatural the practical with the miraculous. And with that, you just cannot go 
wrong. <laughs> and by the way, anybody that's out there that is not sure they're going to heaven when their life on this earth is over, you can simply go to daleblack.org and then click on book your heaven flight. <laughs>